we're going to go ahead and do a series like we've done in the past uh, on the evolution motor. Now we're going to switch to a twin cam motor. Um, and I'm going to model on a B motor so that you can actually see the internals of the balance system on a, the, the motor used in the soft tail. So that's what we're going to start with. All right, guys, video one here is going to match lab one here where we're going to we're going to remove our rocker boxes, our assemblies, with the goal in mind is to take the tension off the valve train so that we can then take our gear case apart and move on. So I'll start with this intake here. You can see we've got a couple of things. Okay, this is part of the emissions. So when we get into Harley systems in detail in class, what we're gonna realize is that we have excess uh, air and an oil mist, if you will, that will, hopefully the oil mist will be stopped in the valve cover up here. You'll see the breather system in a bit. But that's gonna come through here, go back here and go through the filter and back into the intake. So what we aren't doing is letting it go right out to the atmosphere. So this is an emissions item on there. We're going to continue on taking our rocker boxes off. Same thing as before, we just want to crack everything loose. Let's see with those different lengths because of the, the angle here. So the shorter ones obviously go on the top and the longer ones are going to go to the bottom because of how much more they have to, uh, more real estate they have to go through. Make sense? Yep. Okay. What we do here is we're going to get Brock's going to turn the engine over and we're going to watch these valves operate because on a four-stroke engine, the same theory, it doesn't matter if it's a car, a truck, motorcycle, small engine, the same thing happens all the time and we really reinforced that yesterday. So let's go ahead and what we're going to do is we're going to focus just right here. Our intake is attached here obviously so this is the intake valve this is my exhaust valve which goes down to the exhaust pipe we only have to be focused on this one so we're gonna zoom in here all right just so we can watch this work in action he's gonna go ahead and rotate the motor over so you can watch it open and close so when that piston reaches top dead center on this cylinder Right after this valve closes, we're gonna be at true top dead center compression. And what we should then be able to do is wiggle these rockers around. We don't want any tension on there because if they are, if that valve spring is holding tension on this camshaft and I try to take this plate off, I'm at a minimum gonna stress the plate unnecessary or I take the potential of actually breaking something or ripping out threads. If you just rip it apart, there is that risk. Can you hear that? Yep. I can wiggle those, what's that mean? There's, means there's no tension on there, okay? So here's the thing. Per the service manual, when we go to take this off, we want to make sure that we take the smallest fasteners, crack, the, crack them loose first, and then work our way out to the bigger ones. On installation, it's just the opposite. If I took these large fasteners out and there was any tension on here, it would put an extreme amount of tension on these little fasteners for the breather system. So I'm going to show you another thing that we can do to verify that we're ready to take this apart. Let's focus here on our push rods. <coughs> we're using a service manual as we do this too so that we do it correctly. So let's go ahead and uh, run through that cycle again. And I'm going to show you a couple different ways here. These tools have been around for a long time. This is a uh, uh, push rod clip removal and installation tool. You can see the cradle here on this and the flat portion. The cradle is simply going to go around this. You'll see here. I push down and then I'm able to take the clip out and that's it. Hmm. Okay, so we've got another one here. Take it out. Some people like to take pliers or do something along those lines. And then for installation, it's the same thing. These do not matter. There's no top or bottom or front or rear. They're all four the same. And then you can see that that's in place. Well, I'll show you. Harley Davidson has a newer tool out. Here's the part number here. I should say new. Geez, we're all the way back to 2012 when we picked it up. But check this guy out. The idea here is I could just come in here and grab a hold of this. 
and just pop it out. It's a little more aggressive. You take this. There's a couple magnets on here. If, uh, let's show that again. A couple magnets. And you set the <coughs> push rod clip like so. Okay. And then what happens is you take and press it right into place. So just doesn't matter which way you do it, but you guys can try on both of them, and that is how you take those apart. So pretty cool. So now that we have our push rod clips off, you're going to see there's a little spring and there's some O-rings in here, is I want to take this, and sometimes they can kind of be sticking, and I want to go ahead and pull this up. Now when we continue on with this, what you guys are going to see is I've got some clips and rubber bands. You'll see this on your lab sheet where you can retain these up. Some people simply like to take clothes pins and put a clothespin on here. So we'll take a look at that. But what I want to do more than anything is right now, I want to be able to grab this push rod and I don't know if you can see there how I can rotate it. I can rotate this by hand. That definitely tells me there's no tension on there. If there's the slightest bit of tension on the rocker assembly, I would not be able to do that. Make sense? Yep. All right, we're going to go ahead and get this apart. Uh, like I said, we have a breather system here, our rockers, our rocker box assembly. We're going to get this all apart. So They have a bunch of different variations of this over the years, but inside here is this little umbrella valve. Okay, so what happens is the oil air mist hits this, and what they're hoping happen is that the air comes through, but the oil stays back underneath and then runs back down into the engine. Okay? So if we have if we have a customer come in that's complaining about the fact of, hey, I got a lot of air in my oil filter, it could be that these umbrella valves are wore out or need replaced or weren't, weren't put in correctly. And if you, could, what, if you can imagine here, from this top cavity here, there's a pathway to that bolt hole, and that's how the air then gets back through the air filter. Pretty simple? I'm going to take the rocker assembly off here. These six bolts in here, just for this bottom box, they hold no tension onto the valve train. So I can focus just on these four next. If there was any tension on here, actually even with this whole assembly, you see how the whole thing's loose? Yep. That's what we want. That's what our goal is. If not, there might be a little bit of pressure still in the lifters down below. And sometimes you just need to walk away and give it a little time to bleed down. You should, at true top dead center, not have any pressure on it at all. At this point, I'm going to simply just take the whole assembly up and out of the way. Before I take this out of here, I want to make a note of, do you see there's an O-ring here? Okay, so those are the things that you guys, when you're not going to hear something, you, when you get your gasket kits, everything's just in there together. It doesn't say where everything goes. So be paying attention to this stuff as you go. I've seen this where this O-ring, I found them down here. And what I'm going to bet's happened is that somebody maybe didn't trust their umbrella or breather system installation and went to check themselves and when they lifted it up the o-ring slid out of place i've seen the o-ring where it's severed off you know because that o-ring is sailing right here okay there normally wouldn't be any silicone on here this is just because we reuse and reuse and reuse here so that o-ring is sealing right here right I've, I've taken this off and found the o-ring pinched over here where it's blocking part of it and then obviously causing a leak that is not going to allow this to do the job it needs to do, and you can obviously see the problem that would entail. So pay attention to the details right there. <clears throat> All right, we're going to take a look at our rocker box gasket here, one-piece design. Uh, there's a couple things I really want to point out here on this gasket. Let's see if we can get in here and take a look at this. Can you kind of see how there's this impregnated rubber channel here? Yep. You'll see on the cylinder head that there's a groove back here for this. <clears throat> It's really important that we're blocking that because check this out. This perfectly fits upside down. Now that's different. Go ahead and back up a hair. 
that's different from anything that you've seen before. They usually don't work on the wrong cylinder. And do you see how that's all exposed now? Yeah. Well, what happens is you put that rocker box on and you finish this up, all that oil is going to puke down in here and run down out the front of the engine. It's going to be a bad day. Harley Davidson, the aftermarket world's done a nice job of helping us out here, though. Go ahead and look at the gasket here again. Front head. Okay, so it's common when you're installing gaskets, any labels go in the up direction. So let me, let me demonstrate that again. This in the correct placement, the wording is up, front cylinder, and now it's blocking this properly. Okay, this is part of the breather system. See that hole again that we were talking about for the O-ring earlier? So on the twin cam itself, we get a multi-piece pusher assembly, but what I really want you to notice here is there's a color difference. You know, if you didn't know anything and you weren't working from a service manual, right away you start to see something different here. And when you're typically working on one cylinder at a time, that's what you're going to focus on is, is commonalities and, and differences. So this black one here, what this is, is the length of this push rod is different than the silver one. So the way I remember it is the black one is the exhaust, or you think of the carbon or the black exhaust, and the silver being cleaner in the intake, but realistically you should just use a service manual. On your other engines out there, for example, the Evos, there's four different colors. Here's the thing that people will uh, possibly have a little bit of difference. My thoughts are is that this has wear patterns and this has been used in this rocker assembly. If we take a look here, The way this operates, I grabbed the wrong one, I'll do this one. The way this operates here is that is spinning around there, and you can see that, would you, would you agree with me that there's a wear pattern? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, can you see the witness ring in there? Yeah. Okay. That happened from use. Brand new, that's not going to be there. <coughs> okay. Now, would you agree that the other side there's a wear pattern too? Probably. Yeah. So there's, uh, there's no top and bottom on, on these marked from the factory because it's just the color of the whole push rod okay so you could take and make a paint mark if you really wanted to be particular about it to note that that was the top of it if that's what you wanted to do but what i would do is definitely keep them together for front and rear cylinders because the bottom side of this you'll see that rides in the lifter it's just the way it's been going for thousands of miles it's a good idea to put it back that way make sense yeah. all right so what am i recommend here is that, I'll just do this exhaust one first, take this out, this is going to be loose in here where it could go you know, falling out on you. Grab this, just set it back in here, and then a couple things you should know too is there's always an O-ring that sticks up in the head. Grab it now, just get out of there. Are you going to put new ones in? Yeah. Absolutely. Now here's the difference for the twin cam, is it's just an O-ring down here. On the Evolution motors, there was a metal washer as well to support that. So. Don't have that anymore, don't need to worry about that. Let's see if I can't kind of spread this out. All right, here's your whole assembly. Your bottom O-ring, the lower push rod tube, the inner push rod tube, an O-ring, a metal washer, a spring, a cup. You see how this cradles up? And then our top O-ring that would go in the cylinder head, and that clip is catching this edge, clips, so that when this is fully assembled, you can see here that clip catches that edge in the cup, and that's what holds it up tight into the cylinder head. Does that make more sense now? Seeing it apart there. So the cosmetic side of this, it's pretty cool just a way to, to cover that up. But what I really want to talk about is the order of this, and you guys will see in your lab sheet that I'm going to make you guys show me the order. People mix up this uh, metal washer and this O-ring. I'll take engines apart. They're leaking out of these push rod tubes after especially like a fresh engine overhaul. They're like, oh man, my, my bike's leaking oil. What's the problem here? Well, if you mix those up, you gotta notice here, when I flip it around this way and try and get the camera, that O-ring is what seats in that, in that area down here. Do you see where it's flared out? Okay, so if I take this and I put this on here, do you see how the O-ring is going to create a nice tight seal for me? And the metal washer is super important so that this spring doesn't dig into and tear the O-ring. When the cup comes down and we're going to compress that, we're going to compress that assembly and then put you know, our clip in place as we uh, build up our whole push rod tube. All right, guys, here's a little bit more info about those push rods and those differences here. I'm just going to focus on the top here. 
you can see we're all butted up against the table here. And if you look at the top here, you can now see the different lengths. So the twin cam, they made it a lot easier, just the difference between intake and exhaust. And you can see on this Evo, all four of them are different lengths, so it really matters where you place them.